Before I get going on this video, a quick apology. Early on Christmas morning, I went for a jog. I tripped over an area of uneven paving outside Beanley State School on James Street. I hit the ground hard and my right knee collided with the, with the pavement. For those of you who are squeamish at home, here's a photo of my swollen knee. So that happened three days ago. It's on the mend, but um, I really wanted to get out here and make this video. So as they say, the show must go on. Oh. Okay, with that out of the way, this video I'm going to be looking at the European history of Bethania, who founded it and when. And we begin by looking at a plaque down here at Eden's Landing. This plaque here, which was unveiled in 2014, commemorates the 1864 landing of the Bethania Germans about 500 metres from this spot. Somewhere probably up towards that area, further up that way, that's closer to Bethania, the paddle steamer Diamond offloaded its German cargo. Oh, and a quick word about the name Diamond, referring to the paddle steamer. This road here, this crescent, refers to the paddle steamer that brought the Bethania Germans down to this area. However, it's actually incorrect because the name of the paddle steamer was actually just the diamond. It wasn't the black diamond. That's a historical inaccuracy that seems to be repeated again and again. So much so that this road is actually called Black Diamond Crescent. The settling of Germans in the Bethania area was not some haphazard, unplanned thing. The whole thing was orchestrated mainly by Pastor Hausmann. We've seen him in the Eagleby video. And he wanted to settle some Germans, well, many German communities, on the Logan and Albert rivers. And he organised with the government of the time to survey some land in the area we now call Bethania. And he brought 22 families from Germany. Well, actually, they came from Prussia. Germany then was not a united country, so most of the 22 families originated in Prussia. They arrived in Brisbane in 1864 and then got the paddle steamer Diamond from there down the Logan River. And the paddle steamer offloaded its German cargo somewhere just over there. So I'm just down near the train line now, Eden's Landing train station is behind me. And in the area just over there, somewhere in amongst those trees and bushes, there is a 1964 memorial can that was set up to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the arrival of the Bethania Germans in 1864. In 1861, the Logan Agricultural Reserve was established. Agricultural reserves were an attempt by the government of the day to get the land more productive, to get more farms happening. This road that I'm standing on here, this is today called Station Road in Bethania. Originally, this was called German Pocket Road and a couple of years after the Agricultural Reserve was established the reserve boundaries were moved this way and this road here running right along here German Pocket Road became the boundary the end of the Logan Agricultural Reserve so that means that this side of the road here there were already some English and Irish farms so they were on that side of the road within the Logan Agricultural Reserve in 1864, the Germans from Prussia arrived and they settled on this side of the road here. So German Pocket Road became the boundary. And a couple of years after that, the Agricultural Reserve was extended even more and it went that way into what we now call Eagleby. Just behind me near that lake over there was an early English farm and the name they gave to it was Kara Kara. And that is actually the indigenous name for the Bethania area. It's right about there where the corner of the fence is. Hmm. So where does the name Bethania come from? Well, it comes from the town of Bethany in the Holy Land. The Germans called it Bethanian. The anglicized version of that is Bethania. In the early days of settlement here, the local indigenous people used to camp quite close to where the Germans were setting up their homes and businesses. And sometimes on a full moon night, the Germans would accompany the indigenous people to their corroborees. And I think that would have been an absolutely extraordinary experience.
Here we go, we're at the Bethanian Lutheran Church. This is the oldest Lutheran church in Queensland. Soon after arriving in Bethania in 1864, the Germans set about constructing the very first church here. And it was a slab church, very, very simple design. There don't seem to be any drawings or photographs of it in existence. I, I haven't found any. This is the current church, which um, was built later. But the original church was just over there, about 40 meters northeast of here. But what happened was, over time, the church just was no longer suitable for their needs and they needed something a bit bigger and more substantial and longer lasting. And so they built this one. So this one here is the one they constructed and it was opened in 1872. It became apparent that the railway line to the south coast was going to go right through here and everyone was a little bit worried because they thought maybe the church was going to get knocked down. As it turns out, the railway line is just there. And the church is just here. Very close, though. Now normally the church is closed, but I was able to get in a few days ago and have a little look around. Well, this here is the branch line that runs from Bethania train station down to Bow Desert. Of course, it's been derelict for many, many years. It does pass through Waterford, and you can check that out in my Waterford video. The opening of this line caused a minor change name for Bethania train station. It became Bethania Junction because it was the junction of two train lines, this one on the South Coast Line. So that means just up ahead of me is Bethania train station, and I will gradually get there. This was originally called, and only for a few months, Karakara Station. And that was the name that was one of the early farms before the Germans arrived. And in 1908, a refreshment room opened here at Bethania train station. The Brisbane City and Fernie Grove train till the train has stopped. Put here because this was a junction train station got the main south coast line right here on either side of the, the platforms and it joined onto the branch line to Bow Desert. So if you're going say from Brisbane to Bow Desert you might have an hour or two wait for your connecting train so you could make use of the refreshment room. And it closed in 1964 and in 1924 a very severe storm hit this area so powerful in fact that it blew the iron roof off the kitchen of the refreshment room here at the station landed on the other side of the train line. In 1943, Bethania Junction just became Bethania Station. And in 1996, the branch line to Bow Desert was closed. There was an attempt to get it going again some years later, but it involved a derailment and it's been defunct ever since. Ow. In the early days of settlement, there was a little bit of cotton growing going on here. And then a little bit later after that, there was sugarcane. And sugarcane was a huge industry in this area, but the Germans weren't all that partial to it. As the 19th century came to an end, it was dairying that became the dominant industry. And then that 
collapsed around about the mid 20th century. And then from the 1970s onwards, just like Beanley and Eagleby and Waterford, you get modern housing developments springing up. It was pretty much in the 1930s that the German character of the area started to diminish. The, the children and grandchildren of the first settlers were now starting to move further away from the area. You know, they, they were surrounded by English speakers, they did business with English speakers, the newspapers were in English, trade, commerce, politics, everything was in English. Services here in the church were conducted in German originally and continued to do so into the early 20th century. And there was some resistance to using English in the church. And so before World War II, German almost completely disappeared from the area. I'm on Federation Drive, and this brings me to the end of our story. This western side of Bethania is the most densely populated. This is the area that was developed in the 1970s and through the 1980s. The eastern side, the old part of Bethania, where the Germans settled, is still pretty sparsely populated. I don't know how much more development they can do here because so much of the Bethania suburb is at risk of flooding from the Logan River. Just want to say thanks very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, please consider hitting the subscribe button. A lot of my viewers watch the videos, but they're not actually subscribed. It'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button.